So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just uh, doing another one of those jobs that from time to time come up, and while I'm fiddling around with it, I decided that I might take this opportunity to just demystify the uh, gearbox shifting mechanism a little bit. Um, now, this is a shift cassette, right? So, this tube here at the back is sitting on the, the uh, gear shift lever which would normally be on the outside of the gearbox where your gear shift pedal would be or the remote linkage if you're on one of the later bikes and it comes through into this little quadrant here bolts onto the back of that this thing here on this side this is where the infamous spring libs that breaks this is the shift pole this thing here I'm trying to get it out with my finger so you can see it there that's the shift pole it goes up onto a set of pins which you can see the ends of here on the back of this big shift wheel and this is the little shift roller that keeps tension on the wheel there is another cam wheel that goes on here which I will put back on in a minute but these gearboxes are called a constant mesh sliding dog type box um, there aren't that many ways that you can improve or perfect the shift of these gearboxes other than very meticulous assembly uh, cleaning and a couple of little things that just will help everything out as you go along. Um, Michael Schneering who taught me to build these boxes he builds them down to the smallest possible tolerances that are allowable in the factory manuals uh, as far as end float goes. You can check the end float uh, on the input and the output shaft, the intermediate shaft you've got to guess a little bit but generally with a bit of practice and experience you can figure out what shimming you need to match the two outer ones fairly closely. Uh, the reason for that is that you're putting steel gears and shafts inside an aluminium housing and they expand at different rates. So effectively you're shimming the gearbox cold uh, for best operation when it's hot. And according to Michael and the way he taught me, uh, the best uh, gearbox that you can have is the one with uniform and the minimum amount of clearance allowed by the factory uh, throughout the gearbox. And the other way is to make sure that the shift cassette and the shift forks, there are three of them, um, are working exactly to the best tolerances they can. There's not a lot that you can do except to make sure that any sharp edges, I always go through on the shift pull, this one was rubbing here on the inside of this, this cam and they are stamped out of a piece of steel so they have very sharp edges on them and if they have a sharp edge and they're not aligned properly they can drag and grab and nick and carry on so once again I was taught and I always have religiously gone through and just lightly chamfered the edges of the shift uh, pole and I've linished this around here so that it's nice and smooth and now slips easily over the back of that plate and here's the um, the little shift wheel this is currently sitting in uh, third gear so if I lift it up now we're going back that's first gear neutral second third fourth fifth so it's that sprung wheel that keeps tension on the gear um, the gear cams and make sure they can't flop around or move around that's got a very strong spring on it and uh, I replaced them with a little roller ball race uh, which is now readily available when we first started doing that it was a very hard thing to find this little spring that breaks everywhere that causes you all this grief and sticks the bike in one gear is that one there now that's the one that snaps and then it allows the shift pull lever this lever here which is like it's got teeth in it like that that grab these pins and they move that wheel backwards and forwards as you move up and down on the gear lever that when the spring breaks falls out of engagement with that and your bike is then stuck in whatever gear you are in at the time the other little thing that you can do to improve the shifting in these is there's a pin here there that this quadrant goes up against on the upshift and the downshift now out of the factory they're built into a tolerance but I was shown and I believe that it's the best way to do it if you go up a gear, so we're now sitting in third gear, and you pull on that lever, see how that's coming slightly past the edge or the center line of the detent? 
and as you go down, you get, oh sorry, that fell off then, so I'll have to go down one more. As you go down, you get the same result that way. So you want, on the upshift and the downshift, you want this plate to go slightly past the centre line of the detent wheel, and that doesn't always happen. The only way, on the early bikes there's an adjustment on the shift lever, but on these bikes, the only way that you can deal with that is to either file off or build up a little bit on either side of this detent pin here to allow, in this case, this one wasn't going all the way home. So this was getting halfway down here and then having to rely on the tension of that spring to push the cam through. So we filed a little bit off the back of this, we marked it, noted where this came up against it, and you only file maybe uh, three or four mil in from the end. And it was touching, touch uh, what do they call it, trial and error. You have to put it together and try and see how it works and make sure that it comes past the detent like that. And that's all you want. So it means that you're getting a positive engagement of the dogs in the gears via the shift pull and the shift gears. Now I'm just going to put the other one back and show you loosely how it all goes together. Give me a minute and I'll be back with you. So this is only just loosely assembled back now. I haven't got the, um, the circlips and stuff on it. But just to finally explain what happens is that each, each of these cutouts here, there's a shift fork. On this side, um, this one here operates on the intermediate shaft. These two here operate on the uh, input and output shaft. I think, from memory. Yeah, I think that's right. But anyway, uh, one on the intermediate shaft yeah this one here has only got one shift fork in it this one here has got two and these the big trick is not the gears or the wheels actually it's these cutouts because what happens is as these rotate through the various indents for the gears they move the end of the ship the um, shift uh, forks up and down on vertical posts they slide up and down on a vertical post and it's the combination of these two wheels and where these slots are that causes the shift forks to move up or down, engage or disengage dogs right through the gearbox. So it's a three shaft gearbox, it needs three selector forks to make sure uh, that they engage and disengage in the correct order. So having this with new springs uh, properly cleaned, any sharp edges linished off anything that can catch and bind, and this little pin here adjusted correctly is the very, very best result you're going to get out of your shift cassette having the least amount of shims, the least amount of end play by shimming the gearbox very carefully and precisely. And that might mean you've got to take it apart four or five times to get it how you really might want it. Commercially, it's a nightmare. But um, you will get then the very best shift uh, you can get out of the gearbox, given that all else is right, like the gears are correct, that the helical gears aren't worn, that the dogs haven't got any pieces missing out of them or broken. But if the rest of the gearbox is in good general order, that will give you the best shift you're going to get. Uh, ride safely, stay well.